It's delivery day. Yes. So delivery day went quite easy, as everybody else can document quite well. That's bought in the Tesla. I showed up at the dealership, talked to a service advisor, let them know I was picking up the vehicle. They had me fill out two or three pieces of paperwork. One was confirming the price of the vehicle that I had already paid a few days prior at that point. And then a document for the Arizona MVD because they send that on over to have the registration and plate sent to me. While I was waiting for them to take care of that, I went on the app and actually got access to the vehicle, set up the key access so I didn't need the cards. We walk over to the vehicle, take a look at it, you know, uh, look it over. I had already saw the vehicle a few nights before when it had shown up at the dealership lot. So I'd already walked around the vehicle, kind of saw whatever small imperfections there were on the vehicle. They had already detailed it, cleaned it, and fixed some of those already. So the ones that were left over weren't things that really bothered me anymore. I set out the doors, the Falcon doors, test a couple things out. Everything was fine. So I drove away in my car and then uh, had, a, had it for a few weeks. So I have a couple takeaways. I've had the car about a week now, about 430 some miles driven on it. Have some first impressions. I'm not going to say what everybody else says. Anybody who buys this car knows that the Model X is great. It's fun. It's fast. We all know that. Some of the things that uh, I either weren't expecting or pleasantly surprised on four things I want to touch on. One is the sound system. So I knew it came with a premium sound system. I think it's like 22 speaker setup. Like most stock cars, the bass is a little weak, but as far as, you know, for an OEM setup, the subwoofer is actually pretty decent for the bass. Everything else is actually really good. One of the things I didn't quite expect was the active noise cancellation. It really helps the system to punch higher than its weight class. It really kills out any road noise. It helps even when the radio's off, it makes the ride seem super quiet. But even with uh, volume pretty low on some music, uh, it's just crystal clear. It's a, it's a pretty impressive setup. I, I was really surprised at how well that was. I may end up getting an aftermarket sub just to add on to the system a little bit, just personal preference. But as far as a stock setup goes, it's, it's definitely by far the best I've had on any of the vehicles I've ever owned for just a, a straight stock setup. Thanks to a viewer from the last video mentioning about the different drive settings. I really did find a huge difference in driving a little bit differently. Not just, you know, obviously how I actually drive, whether I'm driving pretty quick off the line and going a little bit faster than the speed limit versus driving pretty calm. What I do is I, I go into the pedals and steering section and when I change it from insane, which is where I left the dealership lot for because I was trying out the drag strip mode and obviously having a little bit of fun with it. Uh, when I put it all the way down to the chill mode, it, it cut that usage power way down. That was a, a pretty impressive difference between the two. What I've noticed, like a lot of other people on the interstate, driving 75, 80 miles an hour really starts to uh, drain the battery faster than it would even, you know, 50 or lower in town driving. It's it's not horrible. It's just definitely a noticeable difference. So when I go on some road trips, definitely that's going to be an issue as far as not having the full range that I'd like. You know, I think it's rated for like 335 miles. I mean, even if it gets 300, that's 50 miles more than my focus range right there. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about that in the end. As far as a complaint, really I only have one and it's a small thing and I might ask around. It could just be a problem with my, my phone case. But I end up having this issue where the wireless charger doesn't actually charge my phone all the time. Sometimes it'll see the connection and start wirelessly charging. Other times it won't. Sometimes it'll do it just while I'm driving. I'll see the light turn on or off because it stopped charging or started charging up again. I bought a case specifically that allowed for wireless charging. So it could just be that the case isn't as accurate as it, you know, says it is in the advertising. I'll try it without the case. I may try a different case. But so far, that, that seems to be a little bit of an issue. I don't want to be on a road trip, think I'm charging for like an hour, and then find out I'm at like 5% battery when I stop somewhere. <laughs> so that's probably the only complaint or issue i got to work out so far. All in all, that's a pretty small one, though. The last thing is more of an observation than anything else. For me, the steering wheel ends up being a little bit of a problem. I knew it was going to block some of the display that's in front of the steering wheel. Most of the things you can see on the actual, you know, touch screen. But there's a few things I didn't realize that would be blocked for me on the display up by the steering column. Probably just because of the height I'm at. The highest I can put the steering wheel, I still am not able to see about a third of the screen. So what I've noticed is I can't tell just by looking at the screen 
if I have my brights on, my fogs on, or if I got my regular beams on. The other side too, I can't tell the speed limit of where I'm driving. I actually didn't realize for the entire like first day that it actually showed the speed limit for the area I'm driving in until I actually, you know, ducked down because I was looking at the headlight option. I saw, oh, there's some more things over there to the right. I would like to try out the yoke steering wheel and I actually wasn't opposed to it when I ordered the Model X. The only problem is it's a thousand dollar add-on and that's okay. I think the yoke steering wheel is probably the best option for most. Just like anything else, it takes a little bit of getting used to, like not having stocks for the blinkers and some models having the horn in the different location. Those are just all things you got to get used to. And it's actually quite easy to. So I think the yoke steering wheel would be pretty good just because it opens up all that extra space and there's not a lot of tight turning that you need to do on it. One of the things that would help me out is I'd be able to see the entire screen that way. So like I said, with, with where I sit and my height, I had the steering wheel as high up as it would go and it still blocks all that out. I could technically lower the steering wheel just a hair and I could see the top of the screen, but then a, a large part of the middle of what's in there, I would, wouldn't be able to see. The Cybertruck has the squircle, which is like a yoke, but it has a top bar. My understanding is it looks like that doesn't block really anything that's on the screen in front, but I'll definitely want to sit in one and kind of see if that's the case. The Cybertruck doesn't actually have an option I believe to change to a normal steering wheel anyway. So it's not like that would be a choice. Just uh, something that I want to consider, you know, going forward. So those are four things that I've noticed as far as my first impressions. Like I mentioned, I'm not going to kind of repeat what everybody else does because yes, I am very pleased with this vehicle. This is a very fun car, but I'm not going to go into details on why. Those are just some things I wasn't expecting, even in the research that I did. So I hope those help you out. Coming up next, I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about some of the supercharging and home charging. I have a Tesla wall charger installed in my garage here. And I also tried out a supercharger here in Arizona. I don't want to try it the first time when I'm on a road trip in case it doesn't work or I run into some problems. So look forward to that in the next video. See you then.